Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Ward. Fantastic show for you today. Jimbo Fisher gets fired from Texas A&M. We are going to talk about that. Jim Harbaugh suspended for the rest of the regular season. Didn't have an impact on Saturday. We will get into that. And of course, Ken Rosenthal, beautiful little nugget on the Braves free agency and who they might be targeting. We will get to that later in the show, but we're going to start off with the biggest story of the day, and that's the Falcons losing to the 1-8, now 2-8 Arizona Cardinals. And when we we're here on Friday. I gave my predictions, and listen, my predictions have been relatively off all season. I, you know, it's 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 not an easy thing to do, but that's why we're here. I got this one spot on. I think I said 24-23 Cardinals. I was like, I just don't trust the Falcons anymore. And uh, no Grady Jarrett, no David Onyemata. The defense now looks very, very bad uh, without those two. I think we underrated how big of an impact Jarrett losing him was going to have on the team. Uh, Offense was okay. I mean, it was pretty much what the offense has been all year. But you lose to the one and eight let Cardinals and Arthur Smith. We talk about hot seat. Uh, I don't even know what to say. You know, at this point, it's just like I remember we were sitting here what four or five weeks ago. There was some genuine excitement about this team. I mean, and <laughs> to say that to say that we've lost that would just be I, that's an understatement to the um, um degree. Like it's it's ridiculous. Third game in a row, the Falcons have lost to a guy making his 2023 debut in some capacity. Uh, first, it was Will Levis uh, against with the Titans. He was making his NFL debut. Then Jaron Hall made his NFL debut. Josh Jobs came in for Jaron Hall uh, with the Vikings, making his Vikings debut. He was acquired that week, and then they somehow come out, come out and beat uh, the Falcons, they did beat the Saints, so that's good news for Falcons. And then this week, Kyler Murray makes his 2023 debut after missing more than a year or close to a year with an ACL injury. Uh, and it didn't look like he skipped a beat. He did throw an interception, but that probably was more miscommunication than actual uh, bad play on his part. Uh, and he looked the part. He looked good. Um, he made plays with his feet on that final drive. He certainly made plays with his feet, extending the drive. Uh, also scrambling and getting that ball to Trey McBride for 33 yards to set up the go-ahead field goal on Richie Grant, who had another rough outing. It's it's tough here to sit here as a Falcons fan and then say and find any bright spots. Uh, Bijan Robinson did get the touches that we've been uh, clamoring for, and hey, what do you what do you know? Touchdowns for Bijan Robinson. Good things happen when you give your top ten draft picks the ball. Um, quarterback play was meh as it's been all year. Uh, it's very clear that the offense is uh, not ever going to reach its full potential uh, with the guys we currently have in the building. Um, that's not to say that Desmond Ritter still couldn't probably develop into a low-end starter. Uh, I just don't know how the Falcons continue to hold on to that pipe dream. Um, all of this to say falls off at the feet of Arthur Smith, whose seat has to be warming up. I wrote about it today this morning. Go check it out on the site, sportstalkatl.com. Should Arthur Smith's job be a little less secure today than it was yesterday? I think that it's a resounding yes, of course. Now, if we consider circumstances, Arthur Blank's history of firing coaches, the quarterback play, leads me to believe that there would have to be some massive destruction here at the end of the season for Arthur Smith to be fired because Arthur Blank has never fired somebody too early. In fact, it's been the exact opposite. He hangs on too long. Look at Dan Quinn's tenure. Look at Mike Smith's tenure. Uh, he's done that twice now. Um, he's always late to the party when it comes to firing. And, uh, you know, Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot are probably looking at him and being like, hey, just let us get a quarterback. And so he's probably holding out hope that if he gets a quarterback, then maybe things will change. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is you should not delay the inevitable. If you do not think that Arthur Smith is your guy, you got to rip the Band-Aid off while you still got these valuable rookie contracts. Listen, the Falcons aren't some world beaters with a Super Bowl caliber roster. But they have pieces that would certainly intrigue some coaches and and figuratively get that quarterback in the building. And they're contenders tomorrow with the right quarterback in the building. It's the hardest thing to do in sports. But these guys are alpha males. They think they're never wrong. And they think that they can, you know, fix a unfixable situation possibly. So I sit here today. And as we go into the bye week, three games skid. We get the Saints at home. Desmond Ritter, likely the starter is where from where I sit. Taylor Heineke's not been good. Ritter's probably not been much better, but he's probably been a little bit better. And you still got the high upside of high upside. I don't even want to say that. That's disgusting. Yeah, that's very generous, buddy. 
upside. He's got some upside, but that's just because he's young. Uh, and, and, and so I think that they probably roll with him. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, the Falcons are in football hell. Like, this is the definition yeah. of football hell. You have a coach that you don't really know if he's the guy. You definitely don't know if you have a quarterback. We're, I mean, actually, I think we do all know the answer. We, we know we have, don't have a quarterback. We don't have yeah. a quarterback. You're sitting here talking about upside. I think the only way we could get deeper into football hell is that if Ritter flashes over the last few games and we win the division and they say, oh, well, you know what, maybe we can do Ritter one more year. Like, no, 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 we can't. Because like you said many times, many times, many times, and it's so true, like you shouldn't be settling at the quarterback position. Like if you don't have a top 10 guy, top 12 guy at the very least, you should be looking for a quarterback because you ain't going anywhere with the 15th best quarterback in this league. You ain't going anywhere with the 20th best quarterback. So yes, could Ritter be the starter? Yes, he could be the starter on a bad team. And that's what the Falcons are right now, a bad team. If we want to get out of this football hell, Get right of the quarterback. I don't know about Arthur Smith. I Like, listen, I don't think Arthur Smith's a good coach. Like, personally, I do think, you know, if, if he got fired tomorrow, I would have no problem with it, right? I would have no problem with it. With that being said, at the same time, like, if the Falcons wanted to give him an opportunity to go out and get his guy, I understand why they would do it. But at the same time, you know, he hasn't taken any of those opportunities. You know, he's had three years to do this. And we've talked about this all the time. All, all he's come away with is Desmond Ritter. They've taken no chances at the position. I guess you can say they took a chance on Deshaun Watson. We're probably pretty lucky that didn't happen. But still, like, they've got to find someone at the quarterback. And they really have to do something. And, and the question is, do you go after a rookie? Because if we're looking at this next year and Arthur is the, is the coach, you know, does he want to, like, take a rookie with his job on the line? Probably not. So what are we looking at? Ryan Tannehill, please do not say that. If I, if I, if that happens, I, I will be sitting here beating my head into this table. Like I don't need to see something like that. So <laughs> it, it, like I said, it, there's no easy answers because we are literally in football hell. Like, and we're watching it and we get to watch it play out. But you know, what's crazy a, a, as much as I'm complaining and as much as all Falcons are complaining this morning, what happened yesterday didn't really matter in terms of the playoffs because the Vikings beat the saints. You still go in there with a chance to take a commanding real like one game lead even though you'll be tied but because you're three and oh in the division and then you have the head-to-head -head over the saints it, it's wild to say but there's just so many things to talk about i don't but I, I i can just firmly say we're in football hell i got a couple more thoughts on all of this you know arthur smith was heralded for his offense in tennessee you know led the titans to a number a top seed in the AFC. uh he was credited with you know basically salvaging ryan Tannehill's career derrick henry was in the mvp conversation aj brown Corey coleman had revitalized his career yada 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 johnny smith got that huge deal uh from the patriots because of his production with arthur smith in tennessee there were so many things to be happy about and we have seen virtually none of that in atlanta now whether you want to chalk it up to Arthur Smith, the quarterback position, the offensive line struggles. I mean, I don't know where you point the finger, but the fact of the matter is, is Arthur Smith was hired because of his offensive pedigree, and we have yet to see any of that in Atlanta. I mean, middling would be a compliment for this Falcons offense. You know, inconsistent is probably what you could describe it as best. Um, so I don't know where to place blame because, Arthur Smith, you were supposed to come here, and we drafted three – skill position players in the top 10, three straight drafts, and virtually have seen no benefit of that. We got Kyle Pitts blocking for John U. Smith while he throws a fake to, I mean, what are we doing to Mikel Pruitt? I mean, this is the kind of stuff where you look at Arthur Smith and you go, what are you doing, man? I mean, just stop trying to get cute. And we saw a little bit of that uh, this past week, just giving the ball to your best players, B. John Robinson, make it a, make it a thing to get your, your best players the football. Now, with that being said, yes, the worst thing that could happen for the rest of the season is Ritter somehow convinces Arthur Smith that he deserves a shot in 2024, uh, whether it's good play, gets him in the playoffs, or what have you. That'll be the worst case scenario for the Falcons because complacency at the position is worse than hell. If there was somewhere below hell, that's where, you know, complacency at the quarterback position. Look at the Giants with Daniel Jones. You don't want to pay a C-level guy B-level money or a B-level guy A-caliber money, whatever you want to say. You don't want to overpay at the position. Um, and this this offseason is clear. They're going to be in the market for a quarterback. I doubt they're in the market for a head coach, but they'll let's, be in the market for a quarterback. Let's let's talk about the quarterback position because the Falcons are going to make a decision during the bar week about who is going to be the starter for the rest of the season. We'll give our opinions after the break.